Good morning, everybody. I hope this video finds you well. Today, what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about soul construction. There is this tendency for us to take everything in the simplest terms that are provided for us and uh, go with it. But all indications that I understand are that souls, souls are constructed. Now I'm going to talk specifically about the construction of souls for attachment to an is-be. Of course, there are the original is-be's. These are the entities, the all is-be's can track their combined intelligences, their everything to the great depths of time. From the, to the very, very beginning in trillions and trillions of years. And from the Isbees, you can derive soul, of course, for individual universes. And from that, of course, you get your consciousnesses and your higher spiritual selves. Um, we understand that. But since given a, the, uh, enough time and enough technology, it's quite possible that a advanced civilization of some type can take quantity, add and subtract, uh, can take quanta and add and subtract quanta, creating uh, souls. Right? Right? They can, if it's a building block and you know that it needs this, this, and this, and you can get this, this, and this, you put it together and boom, you've got something, whether it's a machine, a pencil, or a soul. Okay? So when Alien Interview was talking about the creation of various creatures and species, they were talking about the creation of soul containers of different sizes and shapes that are all thus attached to various isbies. Okay? So instead of us thinking, okay, that's an independent soul, that's a deer, for instance, and it's an independent soul, we're actually looking at the creation of, of a container, a soul container. So souls have been around from the beginning of time and they create associator. Quanta has been around from since the beginning of time and they create associations known as isbies. These have these are associations. We know what an isbe is. Then when you enter into a universe, you uh, have various containers, soul containers. And uh, and uh, as I've described before, each type of soul container exists, whether it's a dog or a cat or a human, they have their own pocket universe. There's a cat heaven, there's a dog heaven, there's a human heaven. These are pocket universes that the souls exist within. Okay. From what I read in Alien Interview, and from what I kind of understand, when Errol said that uh, they were making the, the entities, the creatures, to inhabit uh, the world here, they're talking about the main universe early on creating soul containers for existence in the main universe. 
and us. Dogs, horses, cats, humans, they created all this stuff from the very, 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 very beginnings. And of course, it all got messed up with the old empire stuff, but let's just go back to what happened. So they created these soul containers. Thus, they create, for every soul container has a pocket universe where the archetype soul exists within. And of course, we manifest these things, you know, dogs, horses, cats, people, you know, this kind of stuff. So to the casual reader of Alien Interview, they'll say, so Errol is creating dogs, horses, and cats. Okay, they create those things. No, that's not what I'm saying here. I'm saying they create a system for dogs, horses, and cats. That system includes a pocket heaven where the soul resides so the pocket heaven is a repository of souls for that particular species in my case as far as I can piece together being a Frankenstein, I don't know what the hell I am. Uh, I was created from the disassociation of other entities, blocks of quanta, and uh, shoved into a container. And I got a soul up there that's got all this reused, recycled quanta up there, as well as probably other quanta. And that makes me unique, that makes me Frankenstein. I don't quite know what to think. So, compared to all you guys out there in audience land, in MM land, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a nothing. All you guys got is tons and tons and tons of history behind you. And I'm just, you know, some kind of appliance, some extraterrestrial appliance in a biological form. <clears throat> we'll find the answers when I pass on, huh? Doesn't mean I don't live and breathe, doesn't mean I don't think, doesn't mean I don't have emotions, doesn't think I don't care. It's just that our understanding of the preciousness and the uniqueness of soul needs a rewrite. It is precious, it is unique, it is special, but it's not God created man, boom. It's not that way. And then he divided man into two parts and created woman from man and says, you have domination over the world. You can kill and eat and do whatever you want. This world is yours. Really? Okay, that's, 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 that's pretty damn simple understanding. Um, I guess the primary takeaway from this little discussion on this topic right here is that given enough technology, given high technology, given the ability to do things, we can thus create for ourselves our own people our own species if we like. We can add and subtract, sort of like plastic surgery only on a quantum scale, who we are. And it's more than just the container. It's, it's not the container. It's more than just the container. It's the soul and the quanta within the soul. Whether it's this quanta or this quanta, or this quanta. <clears throat> and 
and that's how I understand things to be. The ability to create life, change its form, purposes, and all the rest is a very amazing technology that nobody's ever talked about. But yeah, we've been talking about that for a while. We said that the old empire had taken over this region of space, which at one time was a thriving area, devastated by war. There was colonies on the earth and completely devastated by intergalactic war. Many of the areas, the, the neighboring solar systems and planets have been completely wiped out. And uh, they decided to, in this wasted area, that was just, you know, destroyed, they decided to create a prison complex. And on the Earth, on the Earth prison, they decided to go ahead and uh, use this containerism, this a physical container with the non-physical attributes, and then the higher energy containers that go alongside of it to keep people and creatures imprisoned. As I described in my last video, those that are individual souls are inmates. Those that are matrix or hive souls are not. Matrix and hive souls can come in and out, in and out, and in and out. They're not constrained. Those that are individualized are stuck here. And there's nothing great about being an individual, right? Because you're stuck here. That's the way individualism works. Woo, 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 I'm an individual. I'm so best. I'm so great. I'm so wonderful. I'm an individual. Woo, 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 woo. That's the way it works. So, with this creation, you can make or break and rearrange quanta. And uh, it's a pretty powerful technology. I think that over time, Errol has given us insight into how <clears throat> the creatures around us come into being and have uh, materialized. What I'm doing is flushing out a little bit more from what Errol said and warning everybody not to judge the statements made in Alien Interview from the lens of your Roman Catholic upbringing, but rather to look upon it in terms of quantum mechanics. And when you look at them from those terms, it becomes quite easily that when Ariel said that they can make, that they have made and created all kinds of creatures, he used the one term about the platypus, he said it was a special project, you know, by some benefactor, you know, the platypus, he says, the, you know, it says, it says that uh, it created this it didn't just create the physical form. It created the soul. And since it created the soul, it created the pocket heaven that the soul resides in. Souls do not reside within this reality universe. Souls re reside in another, un another universe. So every time Ariel said that they created a creature, a species. That means that not only did they create the form, but they created the operational environment for it. The pocket universes, the soul and quanta organization, how the 
physical body interacted with the non-physical body and the higher energy bodies, how that interacts together. And because of that, we can say that what, stepping back, we can say that what domain has done, or, or maybe they weren't even domain when they were doing it. The impression I have, they had another term and another name for another time, was that when they started flushing out this universe and they started populating this universe, what they did was systematically populated it with life. And that involved all sorts of quantum manipulations. And therefore, any entity, any organization, domain, that can create species, as Errol said, and can create the bodies associated with it, like Errol said, can also create heavens where the souls exist, as well as mechanisms such as myself, Frankenstein monsters such as myself, appliances such as myself to do things. So it's not just a doll bodies that they create to use, but they also create physical manifestations that are given missions and tasks. I sure as hell hope that uh, I'm not treated as a um, appliance that eventually breaks down and I'm thrown in a garbage can, huh? I don't picture Domain as a consumer society in that way, but I'd really hate if that were to happen, huh? That would be a major bummer. But I gotta tell you guys, the life I've had Dang, no way I'm coming back to this shithole planet. I'm out of here. Send me up. Beam me up, Scotty. That's it. So let's go through the quick takeaways here because I'm getting a little long in the tooth. The bottom line is this. Uh, domain, as well as other societies, perhaps the old empire, have the ability to take the building blocks of quanta and create quanta. Being able to take quanta means that they can uh, arrange and create bodies that, that, and vehicles that that quanta uh, use, and thus they can create species on demand. With each species means they create a heaven. When they created this prison environment, they created a very special heaven for the prison environment, as well as the physical environment that you have right now. Now here is the bottom line, and I don't have an answer for this. Is the human heaven trapped within the prison confines or is the human heaven the human heaven for all human archetypes because that is where the soul resides and the soul can come and go and enter and leave universes at will and that is where the higher energy mantid Guardian angels exist, and they can come and go from the heavenly realms. I don't know, but it seems to me 
that the entrapment containment area of the general population, the GP here, is the physical realm and not the heaven. This is a thought that we need to uh, play around with and investigate, and I will, as soon as I get the Q&A moving, back again. Things to ponder about, things to consider, think about. It's an uh, investigation of how absolutely expansive the human heaven is, and whether it's a pocket universe associated with the reality universe, or whether it's a pocket universe associated with the main universe. We don't know. And that's the question. I'd like to hear what you think. Do you think it's associated with the reality universe or the main universe? Which one? And uh, it's a question I'm going to be asking, huh? But I want your thoughts on this matter. Okay, with that, people, take care. Remember, ah, remember, remember, I believe in you. Me who to tell the answer, Shang Ban Yang Go, I shan't go, no, no, she couldn't do Because.